Hey guys, Crypto Dad here, and today I'm going to show you how to install and run AutoGPT. So let's get started. So AutoGPT is an open source software package that you can download and run on your computer that extends the capabilities of chat GPT. And I wanted to give a step-by-step -step tutorial designed specifically for Windows users. And I'll show you every step of my process and make it really easy for you. Now, before we get into it too far, I just want to point out that AutoGPT is not going to make coffee for you in the morning and tuck you in bed at night. It is groundbreaking software. It is cutting edge software, but it is not perfect and it's not going to do everything for you. So keep that in mind as we work forward. There's going to be a little bit of ambiguity and a little bit of troubleshooting that you're going to have to do along the way. Now, in order to get all of this done, you're not going to need to know how to code. You're not going to have to write any code, but you are going to need to configure a, a development environment and download some code and run it. You are going to need also to configure the environment variables. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So don't worry. And then once we're done, uh, I'll show you how to train the AI a little bit uh, to get what you need done. So don't forget to stick around for that. And if you haven't done so yet, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. All right, now a few little caveats I wanna get out of the way. I'm gonna give you a brief overview of what I'm gonna do. Now the three APIs that I'm gonna do for you today are the OpenAI API, the Pinecone API, which extends the memory capabilities a little bit, gives it a place to store things, and then the Google API will help you with some interfaces to Google searches. And don't worry about all these websites. I'm gonna have links for everything down in the description below. All right, so OpenAI is the company that makes uh, chat GPT. And this is where we're gonna get our API that we're gonna to need to access their services. You can create a standalone account or you can sign in with your Google account. Once you've got yourself signed in and got an account, you can go over here to view API keys. Right, and this is where you're going to create an API key. Uh, all you have to do is click this little button here and say create new secret key, give it a name. All right, and once you get this key, you wanna copy it into your clipboard and save it somewhere. I've got a little folder on a flash drive that has all of the API keys that I created. Right, so you wanna make sure that you uh, put them somewhere safe and don't reveal them to anyone else. Now, another thing you'll need to uh, do with your API key for OpenAI is set up billing. Right? If you go over here to billing, uh, you wanna set up a payment method. Now, it's not really that expensive, but you do need to do this because if you're only using the free account, the API is only going to allow you like three calls a day or something like that. It's not going to be very useful at all. So you want to set up a payment method with a debit or a credit card, and then you can set your usage limits. As you can see here, there's a hard limit uh, default of $120 per month. You can take that down to $50, whatever you want to do. And then there's a soft limit that will will give you an alert when you're getting close so that you don't have to like just completely stop what you're doing, right? So uh, set those up for yourself uh, along with your API key. Now the next API key that I'm gonna show you is Pinecone. Now uh, Pinecone gives you the ability to sign up for a free account. Uh, so far I've been able to use Pinecone uh, for free and haven't had any problems yet. They've got a little alert there for auto GPT users. Uh, it looks like the uh, paid plans are more for advanced users, right? So you should be able to use uh, the API, right? And all you have to do is uh, create an API just like we did before. Uh, now, uh, when, when you create this API, there are a couple of things you need to save. And you know you can show this value or just copy it into your clipboard. But just remember, you'll also need this environment variable, right? Which won't get copied when you click this. So make sure you copy that as well and save it somewhere safe. All right, and then the next one is the Google API. 
Google API is accessed through the Google Cloud Console. I'll put a link to that down in the description below. What you want here uh, for Google is the Google Custom Search API down here. You can look for it up here too. All right, you just want this one. You'll want to enable this. Once you've enabled it, you'll want to go over here to credentials and then uh, c create an API key. Uh, you want to copy that into your clipboard and save that somewhere. In addition to the API key, you'll also need a Google custom search engine. Uh, I'll put a link to this down in the description. You'll basically just hit get started. Uh, you'll give it a name. Doesn't really matter what you name it. Uh, you'll want it to search the entire web. You'll fill out the CAPTCHA, hit create, and then you'll have this code here. Now you can grab uh, the entire thing uh, and save it over in your little text file, but really the only thing you're gonna need is this like little number here uh, when we uh, start configuring. Let's get those uh, dev tools installed. All right, so the first thing we'll do is Python. We'll need Python uh, because the code is written in Python, so uh, we'll definitely need Python. We can go over here to downloads and just click uh, Python, the latest version of Python. We'll save that, right? And then also uh, we're going to need uh, the Visual Studio Code, uh, which helps with our when we're editing our configuration file. Yeah, we'll just uh, drop that in our downloads folder. We'll need GitHub Desktop. We'll just drop that in our downloads folder. And uh, for Git, we'll do 64-bit uh, Git for Windows. And uh, we'll need Docker. We'll just uh, click that, download, drop it in. And the uh, install Linux for Windows WSL, uh, we'll be able to do that in the uh, command line when the time comes. All right, so let's go to our downloads folder and we'll start with Python. Just double click. Now we want to make sure that we tick this off. This is very important. Uh, you're going to run into some error messages if you don't have Python added to your path environment variable on your computer. So it's very important you tick that off before you go. Uh, click install now. Let that get installed. All right, and there we go. We can close that out. Let's go ahead and uh, do the Visual Studio code. Get that installed. Uh, I just like to tick everything off, just uh, can make sure uh, all your bases are covered. Maybe a little overkill, but there's nothing more frustrating than getting some cryptic error message for something that's not connected or whatever. Uh, you can go ahead and launch it if you want to, uh, but we don't need it at the moment. All right, and uh, I'll do GitHub for desktop. Uh, if you have a GitHub account, you can sign yourself in if you want. It's totally free. But you can skip that as well. And there we go. That one's ready. Uh, we'll go ahead and install uh, Git for Windows, which is kind of the uh, this is kind of the command line version. And as I said, uh, the auto GPT uh, sort of wanted to make use of it uh, down the road. So a uh, good idea to just make sure everything's proactively installed. Uh, most of these, uh, you can just use the defaults. It's fine. These are already ticked, and I tick these off just to be on the safe side. It's up to you. If you want to read all this carefully, that's entirely up to you. I just want to get you uh, up and running with all the, inf the, with all the tools that you're going to need. All right, and that's done. We'll need Docker also. Now, uh, we're not going to be using Docker to actually download images and uh, run using Docker, but uh, as I mentioned, the uh, auto GPT uh, actually writes code on, on its own as it's doing things, and uh, at one point it complained that it didn't have access to Docker functionality, so uh, I just installed this in case it needs it. This takes a couple of minutes. All right, and there you go. Now we've got all our tools ready, except for that Linux subsystem, but I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, auto GPT uh, code uh, downloaded uh, to a local folder on our computer. We'll go over here to the repository, uh, and we can just copy this URL into our clipboard. 
We'll go over here to GitHub for desktop. What we want to do is clone a repository. Uh, we're going to use the URL and we'll just paste in that uh, URL. Now, I don't like to use uh, this folder. I would just uh, put it on my uh, C drive. All right. You can also click it like this, you know, and just click your C drive. All right. So the folder uh, is going to reflect the uh, folder that's on the GitHub. We'll just click clone. And then it's going to show it here. And if you go over to your C drive, you'll see that there is an auto GPT folder now. If you click it, there's a bunch of stuff in there, right? That's what we want. Now, one little caveat uh, that I ran into that I, I want to uh, pro preemptively uh, show you so you won't get this error message is that the master branch is uh, unstable. Right. If they if you go down here, they'll say, don't use the master branch, use the stable branch. There's an easy fix for that uh, using GitHub desktop. You don't have to do any commands. You'll just click here. You want to search for stable. So uh, the, the latest one just came out. So just use the the base stable. Right. And it just updates it for you right away. And so now you're running the stable branch instead of the main branch, right? Really easy to do in uh, GitHub for desktop, right? All right, now that we've got the software installed, let's uh, navigate over to that, right? If we go here to our PC, we go to our C drive and just open up the auto GPT folder. We're going to dive into the world of command line, which I know can be a little scary, uh, but, uh, just bear with me. I'm going to walk you through all of it. Now, I'm going to give you a little pro tip to open it in the correct folder. So if you hold down your shift key and then right click in the window, you'll get the option to open the Windows PowerShell here. And if you do that, you'll see that you're already in the correct folder. So the first thing we'll do is uh, get that Windows Linux system installed. Right, it's pretty simple, right? Just uh, copy this command uh, by clicking copy here, go back over to your shell, and you can do uh, control V for paste. And then hit enter. All right, in my case, it's already installed, so I don't have to do anything else. But in your case, you'll probably see a bunch of stuff flying by. Now, the next thing we'll do is a command that I'll put down in the description. PIP is a little command that you can use to do some housekeeping in your Python environment. And what we want to do is download all the requirements that are needed. If you look at this folder, you can see that there is a file for the requirements. So uh, it's just going to read that file and install all of the necessary requirements for running this little program. All right, and there it goes, flying by. As you can see, a lot of mine are already installed. And there you go. All right, and there we go. Now we can kind of minimize this. Let's go over to our code base, uh, the Visual Studio, and let's go ahead and open up the uh, software because we're going to have to do a little configuration. All right, as I mentioned, we're not going to need to write any code, but we are going to need to do a little bit of configuration. Let's open folder here, and uh, we'll navigate to our C drive and just hit auto GPT, that's the folder, right? And then just select folder. It's gonna open everything up, go ahead and trust the authors. Now we don't need to do this, right? You can ignore this. This little file here is the ENV template. If we click here, you'll see that they have, uh, it's, it's pretty long and scary, but uh, there's only a few things that we need to modify, all right? This is just a template. Uh, you'll notice that most of the items in the file are commented out. And uh, so most of these, the defaults are just going to auto run when you run the program. Notice there's one here that's not commented out, and that's your open API key. We're definitely going to need that. They've got some sections here for the Pinecone and uh, the Google that we downloaded, if you recall right, the Google APIs. So we'll get to those. Now, before we do this, uh, we want to do a save as because this is just the template. 
right? And the program will actually be looking for a file called .env, not template. So all we have to do is go up here to File, choose Save As, and uh, we'll just erase the template part, right? We just want it to be .env, and uh, we don't want it to have an extension, right? So we'll just uh, pull this down, scroll down to No Extension. That's what we need, a .env with no extension. We'll click Save. And you'll notice that it appears over here on the side, and it's got a little different icon now. This is our uh, environmental configuration file. Notice also that now that this file was not downloaded from GitHub. We created it. So once we have created this file and configured it, and then we update the program, like if later there's a newer version of uh, Auto GPT and we pull down that version into our environment, we won't overwrite this file, right? Because this file is local to our computer and is separate from the code repository. But the code does look for it, so we now we have it, right? So the first thing we'll do is grab that uh, API from OpenAI. As you recall, uh, it was a good idea to put them in a separate text file. Right, this is our open AI key. We'll just highlight it, copy it into our clipboard. We can click and uh, select here and just backspace and then hit control V uh, and paste in that uh, open AI key. All right, and then we'll uh, go up here to file and choose save. All right. Now, really, that's the only thing that we're going to need to make this code run. So at this point, let's see if we can get it to run. That's the important thing when you're configuring an environment. So if you've downloaded and installed all of the items that I mentioned, then this code should run for you. <laughs> In this ambiguous guide that they've given us, uh, this is the uh, command that's going to make this thing work, right? The uh, .run.bat. If you look here in the file, there's that, the file is there in this uh, folder, right? And if we go back to our Windows PowerShell and do a dir command, you'll see all of the files that we can see over here, right? We're looking at the same files. All right, and now we're ready to run it for the first time. So uh, just control V, that uh, command there, and hit enter, and boom, it ran. Okay, all right, this is our goal. This is what we wanted to see, right? Now we'll hit enter, and uh, we can give it something to do. So the version 3 is a little different than the previous version. The previous version, it asks you to give it a name and give it up to five goals. Uh, this one is a little more open-ended. You can kind of write anything you want um, and just give it as much information as you can, just as you would chat GPT. You could say something like, give me, give me five home business ideas. Right, just three little simple commands. I'm just giving it something hopefully simple enough uh, so that you can see this thing in action. Uh, we'll hit enter here. Now, uh, note here that uh, the memory type is local cache and the browser is Chrome. Right, we're going to modify this a little bit so that we'll, we'll be using the pinecone instead because that uh, gives it a little more storage and uh, we'll go ahead and put those Google APIs in there as well. But as it stands, I just want to you to see how this works. So as you can see here, it, uh, it doesn't ask me to name it anymore, doesn't ask me for the role, um, and it doesn't ask me for the goals. Basically, it just gives me this open-ended thing, I want auto GPT-2, and I gave it something, right? You can give it just about anything you want. Uh, your imagination is your only limitation, right? So after it uh, determines what you're asking it to do, it comes out with a little plan here. It says it's going to brainstorm, gets a list of ideas. You'll notice that it uh, elaborated quite a lot on my little idea, 
<laughs> rather. Uh, so you have to kind of, sometimes you'll have to rein it in just a little bit. Sometimes it might do more than you really care for it to do. Uh, but after it lists this out, you can just, uh, you have these choices here. Yes to authorize, uh, Y dash N to run continuous command. You can set it to continuous mode. Uh, I, I've tried to do it this way. I've, it's never really worked for me, but there are some switches that you can use when you run it to use continuous mode. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, it's not, it doesn't, like I mentioned, it's still experimental. It, uh, it, it does some things. It's better to sort of coax it along yourself. So, uh, and you will get tired of hitting Y. I'll tell you that right now. You're going to kind of get tired of hitting Y. Um, and you're, you'll get a little frustrated with it. It's going to ask you way too many questions for what you consider as kind of a simple task, depending on, you know, your needs. But uh, try not to uh, get too frustrated. I'll go ahead and hit Y here. Now, you're going to see error messages as well. Uh, it's kind of interesting the way that it works. It'll say things like, I'm going to do a little task, and uh, I'm going to run this little program that'll do this task for me, right? And then it'll say something like, oh, the program isn't there. And so then it'll say, now I'm going to, well, I guess I need to write it. So it'll write it. <laughs> So here it's talking about this command list in uh, JSON format. It hasn't actually created it yet. It's just referring to something that it hasn't created. And so the next step will be, oh, well, I better create this file. So uh, it's kind of interesting to watch the process of how it works, uh, but it will eventually get through the process. It might run into errors too. Uh, it might run into an error. Uh, it tries to pull something off the internet. It's not what it needs. And it'll say something like, oh, well, let me try a different way. So you'll need to keep hitting Y uh, as it refines its methods. And it will eventually become successful as it moves along. So as you, And as you can see, uh, it's refining the ideas a little bit each time. Now, to get out of it, we can just hit N, right? And then uh, it goes back to the command prompt. Now that we've seen it in action, we know it's running, everything's fine. It's not giving you any error messages related to Python or Windows or containers or anything like that because we've got all of the uh, tools that it needs running in the background. You might also want to go ahead and launch Docker, give it access to the Docker uh, environment. Yeah, so this is one of those that I ran into. Uh, we, we do need to update the Windows subsystem for Linux, right? Let's just copy that into our clipboard, right? We'll go back over to our command line and just uh, control V that in and let it run that update. All right, it didn't take long. We can go ahead and run Docker now without any problems. It hasn't really asked for access to any of the containers but it's good to have it sort of running in the background, right? In case, in case it needs it. Now, uh, let's go back over here to our uh, environment file and let's go ahead and add those other APIs that we had in there. Scroll down here to uh, the memory backend. Now, notice here it gives us some instructions uh, for setting up the memory backend. Uh, we're using Pinecone. So uh, it mentions that you should use Pinecone instead of local. So we're going to uncomment this. And we'll just write Pinecone in here. All right. Now we need to put in those Pinecone APIs that I, we downloaded. We can uncomment both of these. Notice the, the reason I'm using the visual code is because it makes it pretty clear what's going on. As soon as you uncomment something, the format changes. So it kind of gives you some cues that things are going the way they should. All right, so the API key here, we'll just erase that. Uh, we'll go grab the key that we got from our, that we got from Pinecone. You can uh, right click and paste if you want to as well. Now that key, and then the region, erase that. Uh, you remember that region field was at the front. If you recall, it looked like this, right? There's that region in the front there. 
All right, we'll just paste that in here. And then we're done with that. Now we can also do the Google APIs as well that will help it use uh, Google a little bit smarter. Right, they, he, these are the two fields here. We want the Google API key and we want the custom search engine. So uh, we'll erase both of these. Leave that equal sign there. I've got my Google APIs here. We'll paste, we'll copy that into our clipboard and paste it in there. Right, and as I mentioned, you only need this little piece here for the custom search engine, right? You don't need this whole script. All right, we'll paste that in. And there we go. Now, I invite you to check this thing out. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff that you could uh, configure in here that you'll have to kind of do your own research for. But uh, you definitely need that open AI key. And then I've added the pinecone functionality for increased memory storage, and then uh, the Google API, the Google Search API, and the Google Custom Engine. All right? Make sure we say uh, save so that it's uh, saved and updated. And then we can go back here to our command line and hit the up arrow to get the previous command, hit up arrow again to get back to this, and then we'll hit enter, and it's ready to go. Now it remembers the last thing it was working on, so you can say yes to continue. Notice now that it's using pinecone memory, right? And it's using your Google Chrome browser for its searching. Uh, it was doing that before, uh, but now it has access to a little more advanced search tools than just uh, a regular search. Notice that when I restarted it, it's kind of starting back from uh, square one. So um, that will happen, but also recall that uh, when, as it's formulating its plan, it starts referring to things that it hasn't written yet. Well, if you've uh, trained it uh, through several iterations, it should already have some code written uh, from the first time, so it will catch up a little quicker than as if it were working just basically from scratch. But do remember that when you exit out and then come back in, it'll remember the task, but it'll look like it's starting from scratch. But because it had written some stuff already, it will catch up a little quicker than the first time. So we can just hit yes. Now, you will see this message occasionally. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, the um, just because you have a, a, a chat GPT plus account does not give you full access to the uh, API keys, right? The API keys for chat GPT four are completely separate. We have a completely separate billing plan for those. Um, and I'm probably, the API key that I generated here is probably not the uh, GPT-4 key, right? If we go back to the OpenAI uh, page for uh, GPT-4, they have this join API waitlist. Um, so if you want the API, the, the, the latest API, you can join the waitlist. So you will get this message occasionally. Even if you have the uh, GPT-4 API, you will occasionally get this error message. As I mentioned, this thing is not perfect. Uh, you'll see this message and then it'll continue on anyway. Uh, I had it once uh, tell me that it was going to use GPT-3. Um, and so I said, OK, fine. Uh, you can also tell it to keep trying. Um, it's not perfect, right? All right, so just keep hitting Y. Now you can see that it did create a file that was written successfully, right? Uh, don't get upset if uh, it gives you error messages because that's part of the process of writing code and programming. You're always going to run into uh, obstacles, right? But the great thing about Auto GPT is that it knows how to... Uh, deal with the obstacles, right? Right, it's got some business ideas. I need to conduct, to conduct thorough research. Uh, where is it writing all this stuff? 
Well, you may ask, right? So let's go over and check in our uh, auto GPT folder. If we scroll down here, there's another folder called auto GPT. If we open that up, they have this thing called auto GPT workspace. If we open that, you can see here, this is where it's storing uh, the files. Notice it's written a couple little scripts and uh, written out some business ideas, right? Pretty cool. Right now, it will expand on these. Right, if we keep keep hitting yes, it's going to keep expanding on this stuff and improving on it, doing a lot of research. So it's up to you how far you want to take it. Uh, another thing uh, that you can do, it's got some ideas. You can say something like, uh, "I'm allergic," like something like that. Right, because you'll notice one of those ideas was pet grooming. All right, and then it's going, "Oh, okay, I got some human feedback here." What am I going to do with that? So we'll see if it modifies that list uh, with that particular information that I've given it. Also remember that you might get error messages. You might see it kind of get stuck, uh, giving kind of uh, in the same spot over and over again. Uh, there are things you can do to help it along. One of those is to copy the, any error messages that you're seeing uh, in this window and pasting them over into chat GPT-4. So for example, I uh, copied that error message into chat GPT-4, and it gave me some uh, information about why I might be getting that error message. Uh, there are times where it will the the uh, the AI will appear to be stuck, and if you copy the error message that it's keeps spitting out, you might figure out a way over here in your Chat GPT to fix it. All right, so uh, I've got you started. I hope you'll uh, use this wisely. You might be saying to yourself, this, this little business plan that I'm asking it to create could have easily been, been done over in chat GPT, and I totally agree with you there. I'm just giving you something that's very simple so that we can make sure that it's working, we can see it in action. There, are, there is additional functionality that will be added later. There are already some plugins that you can get and install, but I just wanted to get you started, get the environment set up, make Make sure that it's running and play around with a little bit. So I'll be doing some follow-up videos down the road when I discover some new functionality. If you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.